Dream Teamers. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. I'm your host, Earl Teamer, alongside my co-host, my big unk, Alan Teamer. Before we go any further, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. <laughs> We gonna get right to it, man. We sitting here laughing because uh, it's the same old thing, man. We just watched the Dallas Mavericks smack around and beat up on the LA Clippers, and it wasn't even close, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty point deficit at the half, an NBA record. Fifty fifty points, and yes, Kawhi didn't play, but fifty points at the half. 2-0 to begin the season, playing the Lakers. They got up for that game. That was their championship. Denver sent them home. They got up for that game. Another championship in their eyes. And on Sunday afternoon, NBA TV, nationally televised game, the only game on at the time, beat down. That's, that's embarrassing. And, and the sad part about it is, and I don't want to hear all the excuses, it's just the third game of the season. <laughs> I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear none about no third game of the season. Oh, Kawhi didn't play. <laughs> They'll be ready when the, when the playoffs start. No, that's the same thing as last year. They, they, they win championships on Christmas Day and season openers. That's ridiculous. You have two superstars. One out, so the other one carry the team. You, okay, even if he don't get the victory, 50 points, that have never been done in the history of the game since the shot clock was implemented. Ever. Hey, yo, e. Pandemic P has showed exactly who he is. It was an opportunity for him. You can't carry no team for nobody to be. Well, this time, um, I must give... Kawhi, the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't low managing. No, he was legitimately hurt. Yeah. He was hurt. Yeah, he got his back to him. He was a, a, a laceration. That's what they call it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so he sat out this one, right? Chance to load manage with an excuse. If he can't sit out, as much as he needs to load manage, if he can't sit out, again, Without them looking like this, what is that saying? And then if he's in the, if 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 I'm coaching against them, any NBA team, now I'm focusing on Kawhi. Take him out the game and make the rest of these non mentally ready to play in the NBA game players beat me. All right, so. We here at Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, as we stated before, we watch the game. We're not big on box scores, but we're not even, we're going to have something for everyone this episode. Obviously, they were down by 50, but for all those people who love the stats, give them the plus minus. Go straight down the line of the Clippers. Just, just go straight down the line. Minus 22, Paul George. Minus 17, Nicholas Batum. Kennard, 14. All these are minuses. Pat Bev, 23. Kennard, 29. Lou Williams, 24. Zubak, negative 33. Mm. Reggie Jackson, 19. Patrick Patterson, 26. Not, enough. The whole team. Negative. Negative. Nothing, nothing lower than 10. And we watched the game, too, and we gave them major props the first two games because we loved the way the triangle was implemented. Yeah. But if Kawhi not on the floor, because Ty Lue... Look, look, wait, wait. I don't think you can even say Kawhi on the floor. That don't that don't make sense. Well, for this particular game, him being on the floor, I don't think they would have won, like, you down by 50 at the half. What I'm saying is they look like a team who was one-dimensional and the guy who was supposed to step up the other superstar Pandemic. just didn't. What, 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 what do you thought? It. Somebody must have told him and whispered to him the words playoff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's it. Once you say playoff to that dude, that's 
it. I saw him. He was back, right back, shooting the air balls. No presence in the game whatsoever. I've never seen this before. And and you got bad teams in the league. We right. know. There are bad teams in the league. And they don't lose by 50. They don't be down the whole entire game by 50. That don't happen. So, yeah, if that's not an eye-opener and I'm over-exaggerating, okay, it's a bad game. Oh, come on, man. It's, it comes to a time where you just got to, again, people pay money, take out their time to watch this stuff. It's Sunday afternoon. A lot of people off work. This is ridiculous. Everybody's not a football fan. There, there, and there are people that's football fans, and but they, they relish the NBA. So they put their football aside. Oh, Dallas and the Clippers is playing on NBA TV at 3:30. Oh, I'm, I catch the football game after. We did that. Exactly. Exactly. And we said 50 at the half. They lost by 51. They never, they, they cut it, they cut a 10 points off of that 50 in the third in the quarter. Third quarter. 40. Right. And it went right back up. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me after us, us thinking, wait, Tyloo. So you was deceived just as well as I was because we had this conversation. So Tyloo. Implementing that triangle, that was huge. We weren't deceived because as LeBron fans, we've seen him in Cleveland. Yeah. Now, they but didn't that's implement what the triangle over there, but that was something new. It's like, oh, he added a new wrinkle to his whole coaching philosophy. Right. But today, it was proven again. When it gets real against a real coach, Rick Carlisle, no well, see, adjustments. It's, it's sort of the same thing in game, the first two games that they played. They were motivated. They're always motivated to play against the Lakers. They're, you know, they're always motivated to play. And then Denver was the team that sent them home. I must mention again, coming back from a 3-1 deficit and the embarrassment that they had all summer long was on the hands of the of the Denver Nuggets. So, of course, it's some extra, extra motivation to come beat on a team that's trying to figure out how they're gonna work this year with some new pieces and missing a, a, a big part of that, you know, and and, and and to me even even watch watching them play against Denver and people saying that oh see Trez is not here and Ibaka could guard uh, uh, um Joker no the Joker always start his seasons off slow. He started off his season slow last year and then picked it up as, as he went. You know, it just seemed to me like, and there's no knock on him, but this is what it is, because even Luca the same way. It seemed like the foreign players play their way into shape as the season goes. Well, most players do that, but they are like out of shape and play themselves into shape. So that's what I get from Joker, even though he seemed to little be slimmed down now. But those first two games, <laughs> It's, 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 it just goes to show you that they got those two wins and they felt, oh, the pressure is off. And then somebody must have whispered into Pandemic P. Player. And he played like it. He played like this. For Lack games. of leadership. Yes, there's one game, but this one game is a telltale sign. Yeah. Without Kawhi, they don't have the energy. They don't have, they have a lack of options. Kennard is a walking bucket on the defensive end. Lou Williams is a walking bucket on the defensive end. Pat Bev seems to be a walking bucket on the defensive end. Mm. They're not as deep as people think that they are. And yes, Morris is out, but that's still not enough. No, no, no. So now, here we go again. I said it last year. They were overrated. Still believe it. 